Hello, in this programming video, we are going to look at multi threaded priority queues. So, we're going to use the queue module, which essentially allows us to, you know, create a new queue that can, you know, have a specific number of items. And it just means it's more efficient, we can use the queue more thread if we need to. So, we'll need to do a few slight changes to our program. So this init method, that's fine. That is, for the most part, not changing. Everything else is all good. So this is more going to be to do with Q and not counter anymore. But we'll leave, I'll, I'll leave the name as it is because that doesn't really matter. So we'll run, in the run self, we have the starting time. That's good. We're not going to do the thread lock anymore. We're going to have that ending one that we had a couple of videos back. So exiting. And here, I'm going to call it not time function. I'm going to call it process data because what it's doing is processing the queue now. So it's something slightly different. Actually, I'll rename this to queue because it's more self more explanatory of what it is, it's like the Q part of it. So let me process the data. Again, this is a method that we're gonna, we're gonna rename the time function to this and do modifications to that. So self.main, self.q. Okay, so now that we've got that done, the this needs to change to process data and thread. We we'll call this Q. No counter, so we need the exit flag again that we removed. Exit flag equals zero. We also need to import another module. Here we, we will keep all of the other modules that we imported. We will need them. So here, so while not exit flag, while the exit flag while it's not, what we're going to be doing is, if I delete this, it'll be just generally a lot easier. We're going to do Q lock the acquire. And now what we're going to do is, if not work Q, so if the work Q isn't empty, so if there's actually know something in the queue we are going to get the data the data equals q dot get then q lock the belief print sentence processing center so this is just what he's processing or thread and here we'll just put thread and data for thread a thread thread and data okay so we still need a bit more because we're going to need to create more of the foot more of lists so what we're what i'm actually going to do is delete i would say I'm going to delete all of this. It will I'll delete this part of it because it's going to be a lot easier. So we say four. So we're going to get all of the thread threads in the thread list. So for all of these threads in the thread list, I mean, even, you know, this list here, I totally forgot. <laughs> we need to create the thread list. So what we're going to do, so this is a lot more dynamic. That's so going to say thread one. Thread two, thread three, name list equals one, two, three, four, five, and now we're going to do Q lock equals threading 
dot lock to work q equals q dot q ten. And now we're going to do threads. So we're going to create that threads list again. And we're going to have a thread ID. Set that initially to one. So we've got a name list and we've got a thread list as well. So it's just easy allows us to create more threads and just add them to our list and using our you know our loops, our loop de loops, loops, we will be able to run thread a lot easier. So again, just making it more and more efficient every single video. So in this for loop, we're gonna do thread equals epic thread. Thread ID, so we just need to specify the thread ID, the thread name, and the word Q, which is just this variable right here. So now we need to do start the actual thread. Now we do threads dot append. Now we're going to actually add the thread to the threads list that we created here. So this is essentially what we had in the previous tutorial, but we've got it in this for loop now, because again, we don't know how many we're gonna have, so we put it in the for loop, and however many we have, we'll add it to the threads list. Now, we're gonna do threads, and so thread ID, and increment it by one, so we'll have a new ID every single time, otherwise it will mess up. And now, we need to do lock dot acquire and scroll down a bit and now we're going to do for word in name list not an n name list work q dot put word q lock dot release while not work q dot empty and now in the path so this is very similar to what we had before in the first video we put exit flag equals one because we now want to run the exit in it and there's a lot of code there, run it and hopefully it works. And yes, it does. So that is it. And yeah, let's see. Obviously, no time is displayed because we wasn't using time to so processing data through a multi threaded priority queue. So that's it for the threading part of this little series. And you know, combine what you've learned over these past few videos together. Feel free to ask any questions that you might have, and I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome, 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 awesome programming video.